Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Ali and this here is Maestro. And in today's video, I'm going to be going through chinchilla colours with you. So the first colour I'm going to be talking about is Standard Grey. Now Standard Grey is the normal colour for a chinchilla, it's not a mutation, it's the normal colour for a chinchilla and it's what they are in the wild. Now in the show scene they actually divide them into three different categories for three different phases, so a light phase, a medium phase and a dark phase chinchilla but they are all Standard Greys. And Standard greys have a grey body, crisp white underbelly, and they have grey ears, black eyes, black whiskers. Now, if for any reason you've bought a standard grey and it doesn't have a white belly, it has kind of an off whitish belly or a grey belly, there may be more going on with your chinchilla than you think. It, it may have ebony influences in there, um, which I will talk about later. So yeah, that's standard grey, and they are beautiful. So the first mutation I'm going to be talking about is actually a dominant mutation, which basically means that it only requires one of the genes to be present in the chinchilla for the mutation to show. First colour I'm going to be talking about is a heterozygous beige, sometimes shortened to hetero beige. This is where you've got one beige gene and one grey gene and because beige is dominant over grey the beige shows through so the chinchilla will be beige. Now similar to standard greys beiges come in a wide variety of shades they can be anything from light creamy colour right through to a darker more brownish tinged colour they have similar things in common they will all have beige bodies and uh, white or very very light cream belly, normally white. They will have pink ears and dark ruby red eyes, really really dark ruby red eyes. With beige's pink ears, as they get older they can actually develop freckles on them. Sometimes you can tell that a chinchilla is older by the amount of freckles they get on their ears, it's quite sweet really. The next colour is actually a homozygous beige or sometimes referred to as a homo beige. Now this is just where instead of having one beige gene and one grey gene both genes are beige and this produces a lighter coloured chinchilla so with homo beiges they are very very light and creamy coloured chinchillas. Their eyes are much lighter and almost like a pinky colour rather than a ruby red colour and they still have the pink ears. You can also get a combination of beige and violet which is called in the UK is called a pearl in America it's probably just called a beige violet and that is what Ted is he's a beige violet and that is just beige and violet combined and they have like a violety hue around them and they're very very creamy as well or can be mistaken sometimes for homo beiges. So the next mutation is velvet. Now I'll start with black velvets. Now black velvets are the result of a grey gene and a velvet gene and basically what the velvet does is it actually creates a chinchilla that has really really dark black face and a black veiling the whole way across the back of its body and which gradually turns to grey around the sides and then has a crisp white belly. Now with velvets there can be a huge difference in quality of the veiling. Some will have very poor veiling which means they have 
a little bit of black on the back and the head but it turns to grey very very quickly around the sides and then you can have one with really really good veiling which means that they're really really black all over and the graduation between black and grey is smaller before they go to the white belly next one is brown velvet now brown velvet is just a combination of beige and the velvet jean and again what the velvet jean does is it creates a chinchilla that has dark brown face and a dark brown veiling the whole way across the back and then it gradually turns to beige and then a white belly as well again the veiling can be different per chinchilla but they're all velvets now the velvet jean can be combined with any colored chinchilla really so you can have in america i just think they call them tovs which is touch of velvets so you can have a touch of velvet white you can have a touch of velvet violet you can have a touch of velvet sapphire you can have a touch of velvet ebony and these have just got all got that velvet jean in them which creates this veiling across the top of their body now in the UK we've got different names for them so like a touch of velvet violet in the UK would actually be called an ultraviolet and a TOV white would be actually be called a black white cross and a TOV pink white would actually be called a brown white cross if that makes sense so yeah slightly different terminology but the same things so the only combination of velvet you can't have is a homo velvet and what i mean by this is a chinchilla with two of the velvet jeans now the reason why you can't have that is because that is actually a lethal combination and any chinchillas that have two velvet jeans will die and um that is the reason as ethical breeders we do not breed velvets together because then you will get that combination eventually and the kits will die so we never breed velvets with velvets ever so if you've got a black velvet you wouldn't breed it with a brown velvet you wouldn't breed it with a touch of velvet you just have one parent with the velvet gene because then that eliminates that risk of that lethal gene coming about so the next color I'm going to be talking about is white. Now white can be a bit confusing to some people because there is quite a lot of different varieties of white you can get. And the easiest way for me to explain it is to explain it the same way as another breeder explained it to somebody else. And I thought to myself, that's actually a really good way of explaining it to someone that doesn't understand chinchilla genetics that well. It's not scientifically correct, but it's a good way of me explaining. So the white gene almost acts as a mask and it masks over whatever the original base color of the chinchilla was. So the first white I'm going to be talking about is actually a Wilson white. Now in the US, I think it's just called a mosaic and that probably is a more um, correct way of describing the chinchilla but in the UK we use Wilson White. Now Wilson White, a combination of standard grey and the Wilson White gene. Because the white gene is dominant, the chinchilla will be white. And Wilson Whites often have grey ears, black eyes, black, black whiskers, grey on the base of their tail, sometimes patchy grey showing on their body as well, because obviously the white is acting as a mask and then some of the grey seeps through almost. Second type of chinchilla is a pink white in the UK, it's called a pink white. In America I think it's probably called a pink mosaic or a beige mosaic and this is just the beige gene and the white gene and the combination of the two. And then what this results in is a chinchilla with pink ears, dark red eyes, and beige around the tail area and possibly beige coming through on the actual chinchilla as well because remember that white is just that white gene is just acting as a mask to cover what was originally there now whites can come in any combination so you can have a white with a black velvet and that will create a white that has very very dark black coming through in in places on the chinchilla and that would be called a black white cross in the UK. In the US, it would just be called a mosaic TOV or a TOV mosaic. Now you can have a, a combination of a brown velvet and a white, which in the UK would be called a 
brown white cross, in the US it would be called a mosaic TOV. And they are kind of like um, white with kind of dark brown patches coming through on their body and, their, and their, possibly around their head. But the amount of, of colour that comes through depends on the, the individual genetics of the chinchilla and how much of that, how much of that original colour seeps through. So then you have ebony white, so this is a combination of white and ebony. And again, this can vary greatly because it depends on what strength of the ebony the chinchilla was. So if it was a light ebony, it can look very, very similar to a normal Wilson white, which is why pedigrees are quite important because you can trace back exactly what was going on with the genetics of the chinchilla. So they can go from really, really light ebony to extra dark ebony whites and they extra dark ebony whites will have really really black spots coming through on their whites so yeah and you can have tan whites which are ebony and beige and white again there's a whole load of combination of different whites and i'm just going to list them so you can see them on the screen next gene I'm going to be talking about is ebony. Ebony is a little bit of a more complicated gene. There's no such thing as a homozygous ebony because ebony is more of a, an accumulative mutation. So basically the more ebony that's in a chinchilla, the more black it will be or the less ebony, the lighter it will be. So, but basically ebony's come in lots of different shade ranges, but it's divided into four. So you've got light ebbs, Light ebonies are basically very, very similar to standard greys. They can almost look identical, except they will have a greyer belly. They might have an off-white belly, or they might have just have a grey belly. Medium ebbs will be grey, but they'll be grey all over. There'll be no white belly, it'll just be a full grey wrap around their body. Dark ebbs, dark ebonies will have dark black around their body and their belly and they may have a few patches of grey coming through. Now, and then there's extra dark ebony. Now, extra dark ebony will mean they'll be completely black all over and all the fur will be shiny and silky and not there won't be any grey in there at all. So the next colour I'm going to be talking about is a tan, or in America, I think you call them pastels. And this is a combination of the ebony gene and the beige gene. So you can get them again right from light tan right through to extra dark tan, which is also called a chocolate. So light tans are very, very similar to, to beiges. You might actually even get them confused with beiges, except the fact they will have a beige belly. Medium tans will have a darker um, beige around the whole way around their body, including their belly. Dark tans will have a really dark, rich brown colour to them and it will be the same colour the entire round, way around their body, wrapping around their body. And then you've got extra dark tans. Extra dark tans are sometimes referred to as chocolates. Now, this is where it's a really, really dark, rich brown the whole way around the body and they're actually quite beautiful. I've owned a chocolate once but unfortunately she died a few years ago, she was an old girl. So the next mutation I'm going to be talking about is violet and violet is actually a recessive gene. So that means that you require two violet genes in the chinchilla for the violet to actually show through. If the chinchilla only has one of the genes, it'll just be a carrier for that violet mutation. It won't actually show the violet colour at all. It'll just carry it. So violets are beautiful. They are a violety, bluish grey colour all over, very, very uniform, and they will have a crisp white belly. Now you can also get uh, beige violets, which I was talking about earlier, which is what TED is, which is the combination of beige and those two violet genes, and that creates like a violety beige colour. You can also get a violet white, which is basically a combination of the violet gene and the white gene. You can also get a TOV violet, or in the UK it would be called an ultraviolet, and that is a 
violet velvet and that will have really really dark rich violet color the whole way along their body and then a crisp white belly and then you can have a violet wrap or an ebony violet in the UK in the US maybe and that is where it's violet the whole way around their body so next chinchilla I'm going to be talking about is another rec recessive chinchilla and that is a sapphire now I've never owned sapphires and basically I think it's a uniform kind of grayish color and again a white belly they are quite pretty I think I've seen one before they are quite pretty um, so that's another gene that's similar to violet and the fact that you need both both sapphire genes to be present in the chinchilla in order for the sapphire color to show through so the next chinchilla mutation is a blue diamond now this is a double recessive chinchilla so this is a combination of violet and sapphire and what you get is you get a kind of light bluish powder blue lilac-y colour they are extremely pretty chinchillas but it take, in order to breed them well you need a vast amount of space and you need a lot of chinchillas because it's a lot of carriers you have to be putting together to create that possibility of getting that blue diamond chinchilla so that's why I would never ever breed blue diamond in a million years I just don't have the space or the amount of animals I would need to do it it's too much work for me <laughs> The next mutation I'm going to be talking about is a Deutsch violet or a German violet and this is a completely different violet gene to the other violet gene I was talking about previously. These produce a really dark dark violet colour all over the body and then a crisp white belly. Hermann is actually a Deutsch violet. I don't breed Deutsch violets. I may have missed a few of the smaller recessive mutations because I don't know them all um, because I don't really deal that much with recessive mutations. The only recessive mutations I deal with is Violet and Royal Persian Angora. I don't deal with any other recessive mutations at all so I might have missed some here. But the last one I can think of is a black pearl and these are the newest colour mutation that's come about and they actually came from Poland I believe Chinchilla Ranch in Poland actually obtained a lot of grey chinchillas and they were breeding grey chinchillas and all of a sudden this black chinchilla came out and they were just like what the hell is that and they bred and bred and bred with them and eventually they worked out that it was a recessive mutation black pearls are similar to black velvets except that rather than having a black veil that gradually turns grey and then white belly black pearls are completely black on the top half of their body completely black no graduation to grey and they have a crisp white belly I think they look stunning I am tempted to buy one but I wouldn't ever want to breed with it so I'm on the fence I don't know whether I want one or not <laughs> 